this is the 34th lecture <coughs> on sinusoidal oscillators, an example of positive feedback. We have so far discussed only negative feedback, and we should see how positive feedback can be utilized. As I mentioned, the concept of feedback started with positive feedback. One wanted to increase the gain of an amplifier, but then this is, people soon found out that if you increase the gain of an amplifier, the circuit becomes unstable. It tends to oscillate. And then this principle of positive feedback, which gives a tendency of oscillations, was not utilized to generate sinusoidal waveforms. And this is the subject that we are discussing today, namely oscillators. In the general feedback configuration, you saw that the feedback gain is given by AF equal to A divided by 1 minus A beta. And if the feedback is negative, then this sign changes to plus A beta. Now, we are talking of positive feedback. So, we want A beta to be positive, A beta to be positive. And <coughs> I also mentioned that if A and beta are frequency dependent, if this quantity A beta depends on frequency, then at the frequency, at some frequency omega equal to omega 0, if A beta is equal to 1, then A f tends to infinity <coughs> and the, the amplifier shall require no input to produce an output, which means that it oscillates. It oscillates at the frequency omega 0. It may so happen, it may so happen that at the freq that besides omega 0, there are other frequencies at which this condition is satisfied and all those frequencies shall be produced. And therefore, you shall get a non-sinusoidal waveform, which can be decomposed by Fourier series into a sum of sinusoidal waveforms. Even if this condition is satisfied only at one frequency, <coughs> it is logical to uh, conclude that this would be a critical condition. It is a critical condition. In fact, what we want for starting of the oscillations is that a beta at omega equal to omega 0 should be slightly greater than unity. So, that the oscillations start and stabilize. How do they stabilize? Our analysis would be so far negative feedback is based mostly on the linear equivalent circuit of the transistors and the active devices. Now, as you know, the transistors are highly nonlinear devices. It is only for incremental operation that we can consider it to be a linear device. Now, because of the nonlinearity, once the oscillation starts, there is nothing to stop the oscillations if the device was purely linear and therefore oscillation amplitude should continue to increase. It requires no input and therefore output is fed back to the input, amplitude will increase, then again amplitude will, and it goes on. Ultimately, the power supply and the nonlinearity of the device restricts the oscillation amplitude. So, it is nonlinearity which restricts the amplitude of oscillations and this nonlinearity is very difficult to analyze because it involves nonlinear differential equations with amplitude stabilizing nonlinearity which cannot be modeled exactly and therefore, uh, we cannot find out the amplitude from a linear analysis. The other question is, who starts the oscillation? I mean, how does the device know that it has to oscillate? The gain becomes infinity. Now, what happens at the input? Noise. Noise usually is white. That is, it is a white band noise. From, from amongst these noise components, that particular frequency is selected at which A beta omega equal to omega 0 is equal to 1, which as you know, we said this is a Barkhausen criterion. Barkhausen criterion. That is A beta equal to 1 is the Barkhausen criterion for oscillation at the frequency omega 0. Now, this nonlinearity which stabilizes the amplitude has another effect. The nonlinearity produces distortion of the sine wave. Any sine wave which is not pure sine, but a distorted sign may be slightly clipped off at the top and slightly clipped off at the bottom. As you know, Fourier series says 
that this can be decomposed into a fundamental component and its harmonics. So, any oscillation that you generate in the laboratory through such circuits will have harmonics in them and there are ways of reducing the harmonics which we shall go into a little later. But obviously, the common sense says that if you want oscillation at omega 0, you cannot generate sub harmonics that is you cannot generate omega 0 by 2. Its harmonics will be Fourier series says omega 0, 2 omega 0, 3 omega 0 and so on. And therefore, common sense says if you have a low pass filter which passes omega 0 and cuts off others, obviously you can get a purer waveform. This is a very simple means. Okay. But <clears throat> let us look at the circuits first, then we shall then we shall look at this phenomenon. <clears throat> now, if you generate oscillations at omega 0 okay, and suppose the temperature of the room changes, you know transistor parameters are heavily dependent on temperature and other environmental conditions and therefore, omega 0 may change. Omega 0 is usually determined by a passive circuit, resistance, capacitance and inductance. And all the three parameters, all these three passive circuit elements also change with environmental conditions, they change with aging and therefore, omega 0 may also change. There can be drift in omega 0 as time proceeds. If you keep the circuit on for a very long time, the transistor heat dissipation may be enough to generate to change the circuit elements and therefore, a measure of frequency stability is used with the usual sensitivity parameter. Sensitivity of omega 0 with respect to x, I have already uh, defined this, this will be equal to x by omega 0 partial of omega 0 with respect to x partial because x may be a multiplicity of parameters. It could be resistor, capacitor, inductor, temperature, humidity and many other conditions. So, this is a measure of frequency stability. Any uh, oscillator can be characterized by this frequency stability criterion. Now, let us look at some specific circuits and then we shall <coughs> go into uh, a consideration of this. Now, um, if the oscillations are to be generated at low frequencies up to about 100 kilohertz, up to about 100 kilohertz, I must say F0, it is convenient to use resistors and capacitors as the frequency determining elements because inductors at low frequencies not only we require very large values, but inductors are difficult to make without losses. You make an inductor, it always has a resistance associated with it, there are losses. In addition, inductors may have eddy losses if you use a core okay? and there are magnetic nonlinearities. You know the hysteresis curve and therefore, inductors are not very favored elements at low frequencies and low frequency for RC oscillators, it goes right up to 100 kilohertz. On the other hand, if the frequency is beyond 100 kilohertz, then we usually use an LC oscillator because inductors are easy to make. You can make uh, you, t you wind a couple of turns on a pencil and take the pencil off, that becomes an inductor. Okay? These are the simple air cord inductors at high frequencies. So, and I must also tell you that there is a limitation on inductors. It can go up to about 100 megahertz. Beyond 100 megahertz, of course, the problem of uh, it is difficult to make an inductor beyond 100 megahertz, which shall have sufficiently high Q okay? uh, because the inductor is small, the resistance is also small uh, and the uh, losses take over. Number two, beyond let us say 1000 megahertz, 1 kilo megahertz, okay? this, the, the conventional circuits, the concept of lumped circuits that loses its meaning. So, you have to go to some other devices. We shall consider for this particular class RC and LC oscillators only. You must also realize that in integrated circuits, we have no other alternative but to use RC oscillators because we cannot make an inductance in that small space. So, even for high frequencies, we shall have to use RC oscillators or LC oscillators where L is simulated 
by RC elements and active devices. Okay. The, the one of the popular RC oscillators is the so called phase shift oscillator. And the basic device that is used is a positive feedback device in which you have an amplifier, you have a basic amplifier which is magnitude A angle 180, that is a phase inverting amplifier. The ordinary single BJT common emitter amplifier is a phase inverting amplifier or a common source amplifier FET is is that or you can also use an uh, an op amp for example you can use a, also use an op amp in which the input resistance is let's say r1 and this resistance is r2 then the gain as you know because of the op amp if the op amp is assumed to be nearly ideal then the gain is minus r2 divided by r1 and the input impedance is r1 so this can be modeled as this can be modeled as if this voltage is vi then you have vi the input impedance is r1 and then avi which is let me take this polarity the output impedance is approximately 0 Okay, output impedance is approximately 0 and uh, <coughs> if the amplifier is ideal and A is negative, okay, A is negative or we could say A V i with this with the polarity uh, reversed. If I use uh, negative here and positive here then I use A as positive. Okay. I could also use a common, uh, common source amplifier for example. Let us use a JFET uh, <coughs> R sub D plus VDD and an R sigma shunted by C sigma. Depending on the type of the active device that you are using, um, the analysis shall be slightly different. You see, um, if you use this as the, as the basic amplifier V sub I, then you know that the equivalent circuit is V sub i, the input impedance is 0 and then you have G m V sub i because this is shorted G m V i and in parallel with R d in parallel with the load resistance R d whose equivalent circuit is the following V i if you convert this into a Thevenin equivalent then you get G m R d V i with this polarity minus plus. So, there is a phase shift of 180 degrees, but here you have an a output resistance R sub d. Okay. So, the basic device <coughs> can have an output resistance, can have an input resistance as you saw in the case of the op amp, the inverting op amp, inverting configuration. If it is a BJT amplifier, basic BJT amplifier, the output is taken here. If it is a BJT, then both input resistance shall be there, input resistance and output resistance. Output resistance would be R sub C and the input resistance would be approximately R pi beta plus 1 R e will come if this is if the emitter is not uh, shorted, but the em if, if the emitter is not shorted you know you get a deduction in gain because of negative feedback all right. So, it is your choice if you can do with R e uh, unbypassed go ahead if you cannot then you bypass this. Okay. So, the, the amplifier the basic amplifier the basic inverting amplifier in general shall have an input resistance R i, let us call this minus A or I will simply say A V i with this polarity and a resistance R 0. Okay. This is the basic the A circuit, A circuit. 
the beta circuit is usually a passive circuit. Now, since this is an inverting amplifier, let us connect this. Since this is an inverting amplifier, we want to connect between this point and this point a network, a beta network for positive feedback. Now, if it is to be positive feedback, obviously the beta network, well, let us say this is grounded, this is grounded. Okay? I have connected a beta network, the output is being fed back. We shall assume in the analysis that R0 is approximately 0. We shall assume that the basic network, basic amplifier is an ideal one. That is Ri tends to infinity and R0 tends to 0 or, or that the input impedance of the beta network is much larger compared to R0 and that the output impedance of the beta network is much smaller compared to Ri. And therefore, in an actual circuit, in an actual transistor circuit, you shall have to take care of these imperfections. Okay? And the frequency oscillation that we shall derive shall not be valid. It, this will be modified, frequency of oscillation and the condition for oscillation, they have to be modified in accordance with the imperfections of the basic amplifier. Okay? Now, in the RC phase shift oscillator, the beta network is one which produces, which has to produce a 180 degree phase shift because you want A beta to be equal to 1, the angle of A beta should be equal to 0 or 360 or multiples of 2 pi. Okay? So, the beta network must produce a phase shift of 180 degrees. Now, since the beta network is passive, it shall also introduce an attenuation. That is the gain of the beta network in this direction shall be less than 1, which is the purpose which, which uh, is being compensated by the basic amplifier. That is the product of A beta should be equal to 1. So, if beta is let us say 1 by 29, then A has to be 29 to be able to generate oscillations. And the phase shift network that is usually used uh, is the following. I am starting from the output end of the amplifier. So, this will be my V0. Okay. Then, CR, CR and CR, a three section phase shift network. Question, why are three sections needed? I want to produce 180 a single section RC network can produce at the most 90. Two section can produce at the most 180, but that happens at very high frequencies okay, or very low frequency that is at DC or 180. This is the limit and therefore, to produce a phase shift of 180 degree in between 0 and infinite frequency, we require three sections. Okay? We cannot do with less than three sections and this is the simplest network that is used. Since I am connecting this to the input, the input of the amplifier, the output of this CR network should be VI. Agreed? Th this is the condition for oscillations. Okay? Or if you so desire, let us decouple them. Let us call them V0 prime by VI prime. So, we have to find out for this passive network, the transfer function VI prime by V0 prime and this will be my beta and I have to find out the condition under which beta has a phase shift of 180 degrees. The analysis of this network can be done by various ways, but the if you have if you have been uh, faithful to SCDR and his 204, you should now know that there are simple techniques of analysis. You do not have to write loop equations and node equations. You can, uh, you can, you can take Thevenin's theorem. For example, uh, if, if I apply Thevenin's theorem here, then I get V0 prime SCR divided by SCR plus 1. D is missing. <laughs> This is the voltage source and then we have an impedance which is yes R divided by SCR plus 1. You should know this R and C in parallel produces this. Then that comes in series with C 1 R then another C and another R. 
this is V0 prime, I am sorry, VI prime. Okay. Then at the next step, what you will do is apply Thevenin's theorem here. There is no chance of making a mistake unless, unless you are <laughs> very keen on making a mistake. On the other hand, in loop analysis, node analysis, you miss uh, a orientation or you miss a term, then you, you, you get into problems. Also, you have to invert matrices. It would be a 3 by 3 matrix inversion. Nothing is needed here. You can, you can do it almost by inspection. If you continue this up to this end, up to this end, I will skip this analysis. You get uh, the transfer function beta of S, let us do in terms of the Laplace transform variable, the result becomes <coughs> 1 divided by 1 plus, you can verify this, 6 divided by u, where I do not want to write SCR again and again, u I have used for SCR, okay, plus 5 by u squared plus 1 over u cubed. This is the result that you get. I have put it in a particular form for convenience of analysis. What is the, uh, does this check, is this result correct or is there an obvious defect in this result? You see at DC, what is the transmission at DC for this network? 0. So if u equal to 0, you see that the denominator goes to infinity and therefore at DC, res DC response is satisfied. At U equal to infinity, the denominator is simply 1, so the transfer function is 1. At U equal to infinity, all the C's act as short, so the transfer function is 1. You must do this checking, uh, I mean automatically and spontaneously. It does not require any effort. <coughs> okay. Now, since I am interested in generating pure sinusoidal oscillation, I should look at beta of J omega and you see that this is 1 minus 5 by omega CR squared. I have taken this term and this term. I put U equal to J omega SCR. Then plus, yes, J 1 by omega CR whole cubed plus j or minus j? Minus j, okay. This will be minus, okay, plus j, minus 6 upon omega c r whole square. Pardon me? No square, okay. Let us not make a mistake. Now, if you look at this expression, obviously, if the phase is 180 degrees, then the imaginary term should be 0. Phase is 180 degrees means that beta will be a real quantity and a negative quantity. That is all. And therefore, for 180 degree phase shift, we require 1 by omega CR whole cubed should be equal to 6 divided by omega C r, which means that this is satisfied at omega 0 equals to omega 0 squared is equal to 1 by 6 C r, which means that omega 0 would be equal to 1 over root 6 C r or F 0, the frequency of oscillation would be 2 pi root 6 C r. C squared R squared. Second, second C squared R squared, of, of course. Okay. So, if at all the circuit oscillates, this will be the frequency of oscillation. As you see, the frequency of oscillations are determined by C and R, the, the circuit, the passive circuit elements, the beta circuit elements. Okay. You also see one difficulty that if F0 is to be varied, if it is to be a variable frequency oscillator, then either all the C's have to be varied simultaneously, simultaneously because this depends on C and all C's were equal, assumed to be equal or all R's have to be varied simultaneously. 
And the usual, usual instrument that you get in the laboratory are the decayed oscillators, they're phase shift oscillators, in which the Cs are varied simultaneously. The three capacitors are ganged together so that one dial variation varies all the three Cs. These are usually air capacitors, large air capacitors mounted on the same shaft and if you rotate the shaft, all the three capacitors vary identically and simultaneously. This requires very huge mechanical precision and that's, that goes into the uh, cost of the equipment. The components themselves are not costly, but this mechanical precision. Nevertheless, such oscillators are very popular and they are available in the laboratory. Sir, yes. So, but even if we have differences, yes. very close, even then we can get oscillators. Yes, you can, but it's not according to a very um, uh, pleasant rule. I mean, you don't know how much to be varied. You vary one capacitor, you don't know what is the rule for variation. You have to analyze again. Now, in a laboratory, you just want to vary a dial. 1 kilohertz, 1.1, that's it. And this is the simplest way to do it. So, we can calibrate it using... <laughs> of course, then you will not buy the instrument. It is so inconvenient. You have to calibrate every time and so on. Nevertheless, the, this is the usual thing. Of course, resistors can also be varied. Three, three potentiometers can be put on the same shaft and varied simultaneously. But C variation is preferred, is preferred because it, it requires um, less mechanical precision than resistors. Also, resistors, as you know, there is a contact problem. There is a, potenti there is a potentiometer. In a capacitor, you have the interdigital type, so it goes in or out. On the other hand, in the potentiometer, there is a contact. If you go on varying this, there is a wear and tear. Whereas in a capacitor, this wear and tear is not there. So capacitors are preferred. However, if omega 0 is equal to 1 by root 6 CR, then you go back to the transfer function. The imaginary term is 0. So, you get 1 minus 5 divided by omega 0 squared c squared r squared. And as you can see, omega 0 squared c squared r squared is 1 by 6 and therefore this becomes minus 1 over 29. And that is what gives rise to the fact that the gain required for the basic amplifier A has to be 29. And then, as I said, to, jet, to start the oscillation, 29 doesn't suffice. You have to make it slightly greater than 29 to start the oscillation. Otherwise, it would be off and on, off and on. It may oscillate, it may not oscillate because it's sitting on the border line. Okay? You have to make it slightly greater at the cost of a slight distortion in the generated waveform because A equal to 29 is the, is the Barkhausen criterion. A equal to 29 satisfies the Barkhausen criterion exactly. That means if A equal to 29, you will generate omega 0. If A equal to 29 plus delta, you might also generate harmonics because of the nonlinearity that comes into effect. But this nonlinearity, this harmonics can be taken care of otherwise. So if I draw an, an oscillator circuit, if I now draw an oscillator circuit, let us say using the FET, we have R sub D. R sigma and C sigma. This is plus V D D. This is the basic circuit. Then we draw, we bring in the feedback circuit C R, C R. No further coupling capacitor is needed because this capacitor itself serves that job. C R and then another C R. And this now has to be taken to the input. This is the circuit of an FET, FET RC phase shift oscillator. 180 degrees phase shift could also be produced if the C's and R's are interchanged. If capital R, one of the, this would be a leading phase shift or lagging phase shift. No, from here to here, would it be a leading or lagging phase shift? Leading. Oh, take a simple CR. 
the phase shift, is it leading or lagging? Leading. leading. The output leads the input. <coughs> but 180 degrees is 180 degrees. Whether it's leading or lagging, it comes back to the same negative uh, axis. Okay? So I could even take a simple RC. Rs and Cs could be interchanged. But you see the uh, problem. If I interchange, I'll require an extra blocking capacitor, extra coupling capacitor. That is correct. So this is preferred. But then there is a problem with this one also. Life is always a mixture of pain and pleasure. Okay, the the cost that you um, the 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 price that you pay is that the output impedance of the of the FET is R D, and therefore at frequency omega zero, R D must be much less compared to one by omega zero C. C comes in series with R D. If you recall the equivalent circuit, the equivalent circuit is G M R D V I, that is the with negative polarity, in series with an R D. And therefore R D, unless it is ensured that R D is much less than one by omega zero C, the frequency of oscillation shall be affected. The gain of the circuit shall also be affected. This transfer function, beautiful transfer function that we got in terms of U, shall no longer be valid. RD shall show its state, and you can make an analysis. On the other hand, if I use a resistance here, if I use RC, then this resistance can absorb RD. That means the first resistance. The first resistance, instead of using R, I will use R minus RT. You understand this? Using that uh, coupling capacitor, this is the price that you pay, but uh, RD can be absorbed in R. Is the point clear? No? Okay. Suppose, <coughs> suppose I have an oscillator like this, RD, I will not draw the rest of this circuit. And then I have RC, RC, RC. Okay. Suppose I produce 180 degrees phase shift with this. Then obviously the equivalent circuit would be minus plus GM RD VI, whatever that is, in series with RD. And then I have R. Okay? I want this to be R. So instead of R, I shall use R minus RT. Then the formula shall remain valid. All the three R's shall be identical, all the three C's shall be identical. Now, obviously, in the if it is an FET, common source amplifier, then this R is not disturbed. This R is not disturbed. It is not shunted by anything. Agreed? On the other hand, if you had used an op amp, an inverting op amp, R, did I use R2 or R1? R2. 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 And R1. Okay? Then, using <coughs> a CR network, for example, here, okay? Let let's use a CR network. Uh, this is grounded CR, CR, and CR. Okay, this I am going to connect here. The input resistance. This is my VI. The input point. Input resistance of the op amp is R1, and therefore R1 shall come in parallel with R. Isn't that right? Again, the frequency of oscillation and the condition of oscillation will change because one of the resistors has become different. Okay? Can you suggest a remedy? Instead of this, instead of I simply don't use this, and I use R1 equal to R. Don't I get the same result? Because this point is virtual ground, I get the same. So in, in an op amp, it's easy to take care, and the frequency of oscillation shall still be given by one by root six CR, 
and R2 by R1 will now be required to be 29, 1 by 29, minus 1 by 29 or plus 1 by 29? No, it has to be exactly equal to 29. The gain of the, the gain of the stage has to be minus 1 by 29. So, R2 by R1 must be 29. Is the point clear? On the other hand, if I have a BJT, if I have a BJT, I have a problem. Okay. I have uh, the biasing resistor, equivalent biasing resistor R sub B and from here I connect the R C or C R circuit. Then you see R C affects the frequency of oscillation and the input impedance which is the parallel combination of R B and R pi also affects the frequency of oscillation. You might say that I will make R B parallel R pi equal to my R. I can do that. Then the frequency of oscillation would still be given by that simple formula. Provided 1 by omega 0 c you have made much greater than r sub c. Otherwise r sub c will show in the formula. Okay. It would be instructive not to make any of these adjustments and find out how the frequency of oscillation and the gain requirement changes. Okay. Yes. So when I found out beta to be minus one by twenty nine, mm -hmm. and I want a beta to be one. Right. So, so a has to be plus. A has to be minus twenty nine. Yeah. But we assume that we assume a beta equal to one. Beta is minus one by twenty nine. Yes. A has to be minus twenty nine. A is minus R two by R one, and R two by R one has to be twenty nine. So can you show the previous sheet? Sure. Isn't this one like the R before the differential amplifier? Right. How is it going? How is the virtual down there? You have to maintain this one. Oh, we assume the op to be ideal. RICM is zero. Yeah, RICM is zero. RICM is infinity. Not zero, <laughs> then it will be shorted. But this point is virtual ground, and what we wanted is an R going to ground, and therefore, this is a very uh, simple and neat way of designing an RC phase shift oscillator. Op amp is the best, best choice. Sir, yes. So in previous examples, sir, you have put RD in series with uh, R sub. Because it does come in series. Mm -hmm. So doesn't it come in parallel? No, I have converted this to a voltage source. My gain is now minus GMRD. Okay. Now, let me also mention that 29 is not a very sacred figure. 29 is not a very sacred figure. If you taper this circuit, the phase shift circuit like this, C, R, first one, then you make the second one as C by A and A R, so that the time constants are the same, but you see the loading of the first stage by the second stage would now be less and therefore this will make less attenuation and we go to the third one C by S squared and S squared R. If I do this tapering then the gain requirement can be increased and it is instructive to do this analysis and show that if A can tend to infinity, if A is very large, then the gain requirement capital A, can you guess what the gain requirement would be? I am putting with a big question mark, you verify this, that with increasing A, with increasing A, the gain requirement decreases and if A tends to infinity, obviously A, A cannot be infinity because then this resistance is not there, this capacitance is not there, isn't that right? So there is no feedback. But A can be between, between 1 and infinity and you can see, in fact, if A is 10, capital A 
the gain requirement is one point. It's less than two. I'm claiming this, but you verify this. The next question is, uh, suppose I have designed an op-amp based, this is R, op-amp based RC phase shift oscillator. How much should this be now? How much should this be? Oh, this is very easy. 29 times R, because you want a gain of 29 minus 20. Okay, then you have CR, CR, and finally you have a C only which connects it to this. Okay, where do you take the output? Where do you take the output? At the say at the end of 29 this point. Yes, sir. It is one. One choice. The other is across R. Which R? This R? Across this. Then you have no grounding. No no physical ground. Here? Here? Yes, sir. Here. Oh no, that's a Himalayan mistake. This point potential is zero. You can take the output anywhere. Because throughout the except this point and except the ground. <laughs> because everywhere there are sinusoidal oscillations. All signals in the circuit shall be at the sinusoidal at the frequency omega zero. But this choice is a gem of a choice. I should have used a different color. This choice. Why? Because anywhere else you take the output. Suppose I take the output here. I am going to connect it to some device, I am going to use this oscillator and that will create a loading of this resistance, which means the frequency of oscillation itself shall change. On the other hand, if I take the output from here, the output impedance of the op amp is approximately 0 and therefore there is no loading. You can take, you can take to any load except when it is a short circuit. You cannot take it to a short circuit obviously because you, you cannot short this, then nothing goes. All right, so this is the point at which you should take the output. Next, even if you take the output here, okay, let's bring the output here. As I said, there will always be some amount of harmonic distortion. That is, there will be higher frequencies. So what you can do is, one of the simple ways of reducing uh, distortion or reducing the harmonic content is to use a low pass filter. And you could simply use, you could simply use a low pass filter like this, simple RC circuit, such that omega C, what is the cutoff frequency of this? If this is R1 and C1, omega C is the 3 dB cutoff, 1 over R1 C1, not RC, do not confuse with this element, 1 over C1. This has to be, where should you put the cutoff frequency? slightly greater than omega naught, slightly greater than omega naught, such that at 2 omega naught the attenuation is let us say down by at least 20 dB, that should do it. As it is, the proportion of harmonics to fundamental will be very small. You reduce it further, another 20 dB, 20 dB means attenuation by what factor? Pardon me? 10, attenuation by a factor of 10 then multiplication by a factor of 0.1. So it should bring it down. If you want, if you want, well, one of the problems is now you are going to take your output here, right? And any loading of this, any loading of this is going to change your cutoff frequency. You see the problem? So what should you do? You should use a buffer here. You should use a unity gain amplifier. If you use a unity gain amplifier here, plus 1, whose output impedance is 0, obviously there is no loading of this. But if you are using an amplifier, if you are using a buffer, a unity gain buffer, another op amp, why do not you use the this circuit? From the output of the oscillator, you use
let us say R4, I beg your pardon, C4, R4, R3. Do you know that this is a low pass filter? No? It's very simple to see. R4 divided by SC, R4 plus 1, this is the impedance of this, divided by R3. So the gain of the circuit would be this. Obviously, this is a low pass filter with a cutoff at what is omega C for this? 1 over C4 R4. These are very simple things to do. You see, from the output of the last op amp, you apply this filter and then take your output here. This is usually incorporated inside the oscillator circuit. And if you want better rejection, then use a second order filter. Instead of a first order, use a second order filter or use a higher order one, <laughs> much higher order one. If you want very fussy, uh, if you are very fussy about the waveform, the distortion content of the waveform. <coughs> okay, this is about the phase shift oscillator. Uh, as I said, even if you make, even if you couple a uh, low pass filter to reduce the harmonic content, who stabilizes the amplitude? How do you stabilize the amplitude? Anything changes, temperature changes for example, the amplitude will either rise or fall. On the other hand, in the, in the laboratory, if you are making, let us say, if you are testing a communication equipment, you want the input or testing the frequency response of an amplifier, let us say. You are going to vary the frequency. You do not want the input voltage to change. Okay. You only want to monitor the output voltage. You might like to record it on, an, uh, on a recorder, the frequency response. Then the input voltage should be fixed. You plot output versus frequency. Well, you can say even if the input changes, I will take the ratio, fine, but then you require a calculation. You do not require it if the input voltage, that is the oscillator output voltage is a constant. How do you stabilize the amplitude? There are amplitude stabilizing circuits which are which use nonlinear elements like temperature sensitive resistors, negative temperature coefficient or positive temperature coefficient or even Zener diodes or ordinary diodes which are very temperature sensitive. The main problem in os oscillation stabilization of amplitude, the main problem in stabilizing the amplitude of an oscillator is temperature, heat. The heat, uh, the, the, the very circuit generates heat. Other circuits in the neighborhood generate heat. The temperature changes from season to season, and therefore temperature stabilization is one of the uh, <coughs> one of the crucial things that has to be done with an oscillator. The second kind of RC oscillator is called the so-called Wien bridge oscillator. The wind bridge oscillator, <coughs> the, the simplest circuit using an op amp is this. I will draw this circuit and then carry on the analysis later. There is a resistance, this is also ba <coughs> basically the wind bridge oscillator requires a gain, a positive gain amplifier instead of a negative gain amplifier. If the gain of the basic amplifier is positive, well, this is uh, this is obtained by this R2, R1, and this is grounded, and the input is applied here. Okay, obviously between this point and this point, the gain is one plus R2 by R1, which is positive. That means the phase shift is zero. Therefore, the beta network that we want should produce a phase shift of 0 instead of 180. <coughs> you can say if you can do it 180, <coughs> why should you bother about 0? Because it uses less number of components. That is the circuit <coughs> that is used is a series RC <coughs> and then a shunt RC. And the output is taken from here and applied here. This is the so called Wien bridge oscillator. Why it is called a Wien bridge, we shall see later. But you should realize that this 
circuit is capable of producing a zero phase shift. Now, zero phase shift obviously can also be produced by a simple potential divider. Why don't you use that? No. Frequency. Who will determine the frequency? A potential divider is insensitive to frequency. If the gain is 0.1, it will be 0.1 at 0, it will be 0.1 at infinite frequency also. So who will determine the oscillation frequency? That doesn't mean that it will not oscillate. It will oscillate. It will and get stuck either at the plus power supply or the negative power supply. We don't want that. We want to generate sinusoidal oscillation. So the beta network has to be a frequency sensitive network. All right. How does it how does it produce a zero phase shift? Let's see qualitatively. We'll make the analysis later. Qualitatively, can you see what kind of a circuit is this? <coughs> we have a C, R, R and C. What kind of a circuit is this? If this is my input V1 and this is my V in and this is my output, what kind of a circuit is this? Does it favor low frequencies? Is it a low pass filter? No. At DC obviously the transmission is zero. Does it favor high frequencies? No. At infinite frequency this is short and therefore this is a, it could also be band stop. No. It is a band pass. Somewhere in between, <laughs> somewhere in between it produces a maximum like this. Starts from zero, goes to zero at infinity, <coughs> somewhere in between. <coughs> it produces a maximum and one can show <coughs> by simple analysis <coughs> that this maximum occurs at the frequency 1 by C R. and that at this frequency V out by V in at omega 0 is equal to one third. You see the advantage of this oscillator? What is the advantage? That the gain required is only? 3 instead of 29. So the resistor spread, what is the spread that I want here? If I want a gain of 3, only 2, R2 by R1 has to be equal to 2. So the resistor spread is 2. There is no reason why we cannot make <coughs> these resistors identical to these two. We can do that. So the resistor spread is only 2, not quite. Resistor spread is only 1. Tell me how. Common sense. I will make R2 as R1 in series with R1. I can use identical resistors everywhere. We will start from this next time. 